Now that we have a custom function that determines the first day of the current month, the rest of the calculation to fill out the entire calendar is actually pretty easy. So we're going to go into Manage Database and create a new field called Month or Monthly underscore Current. We'll have a couple other calculations in here, so we don't want to just call it Monthly Calendar. We'll call it Monthly Current. That'll be a calculation field. And we're going to come down here and set a couple of things right off the bat. First of all, I know I want date results. You'll see why and how it displays. I also know I want it to be unstored. Unstored means that it will recalculate this formula every time the screen refreshes, typically when you're moving from record to record. Because this calculation will have no references to fields, just simply the get current date, we need that for it to update because a calculation can only update if one of the fields it references is changed. There are no fields referenced in this formula except the current date, so we need it to refresh every time we navigate records or every time we open up the window. So it, it puts in the current date and recalculates that calendar. We also want to put in 42 repetitions here. Now why do we want to do that? Why do we want to use repeating fields? Let's start with taking a look at a standard calendar. So here's one right here that we've got and you'll see that what we have here is a calendar that has seven across and six down. That's 42. That's why we're doing 42 repetitions. Also take note of that a typical calendar will have not only the days from the current month, but also anything that fits on the previous days and the uh, later days here. So it's got not just the current month, but everything else. So that actually uh, you know, helps you to go, go ahead and move from calendar to calendar and see what's you know, previous. It fills it out too and makes it a nice uh, rectangle. So 42 makes sense as far as number of repetitions, but why are we actually using a repeating field? Why would we want to do that? Well, I've seen people do this kind of formula, this calendar formula, with a monospaced font. So they result in a calculation that has you know, things separated by spaces and stuff like that. And so a monospace font like Courier will make everything lined up. If you have some other kind of font that's you know, not going to be monospaced, it's not going to line up properly. And that's one way to do it. But it does make the formula easier when you do it with the repeating field, as you'll see. We're not going to show you how to do it other ways, but trust me, it's a lot easier to do it. It's very easy to understand because what's going to happen is this calculation is going to apply to each repetition, each 42, and, and change based on the repetition number. It also makes individual little fields for each one of these without having to create a whole bunch of fields. I could go field one, field two, field, and make a whole bunch of calculations that are slightly different, but I'm going to have all these calculations in Manage Database, and this will get the same result, having one little pocket there for each day, and still, you know, but only have to use one formula. Now, normally, you don't want to use repeating fields because they are bad for reporting. So make sure that you don't use repeating fields except for tricks like this. For instance, I used it in my document management video to go ahead and make a thumbnail view. I wasn't storing data, I was simply making an interface. And that's really what we're doing here. We're not storing the data, we don't need to report on it. We're simply going to go ahead and make an interface and that's okay to use repeating fields then. Otherwise, I'd steer, uh, stay clear of them. So we'll come in here and let's take a look. We're going to start right off with the let function. Put in at date equals get current date. We'll declare that right off the bat. We're going to say at first day because we want to figure that out, but we're going to declare it as a variable. So we're going to use our first day function right there. And now you're realizing right now at this point that we don't actually need this at date up here because this already has that in it. So we can take that part out. You often, when you're creating formulas, don't create them perfectly right off the bat. And I like to do that in the videos to show you that you know anybody can create these uh, formulas. It's not just, I'm not like superhuman or anything like that. So we've got the first day uh, figured out. That's the first day of the month, you know, May 1st, June 1st, whatever. Now we need to also figure out the start date. Now that's going to be the date where the beginning of the calendar happens. Remember, there was a few extra days there. Let me show that calendar again. 
See on the May we have the 30th and the 29th. I want to figure out what this day is. And so you can do that by taking the first day. So we'll refer to at first day and subtract the day of the week. So FileMaker has the day of the week. Sunday is going to be a 1, Monday's a 2, all the way through Saturday, which is a 7. Those are the days of the week. So we can subtract that from that first day and actually get to the first day of the calendar that's going to be on there. Not the month, but the calendar. So we'll say day of week, and we'll say on there at first day. There we go. And so you're wondering, why did I declare at first day up here when I have this custom function? Well, I only have to uh, figure that out once, and then I can refer to it anytime I want. OK, so let's go ahead and put in the next thing, which is going to be the part that makes this really work with uh, a repeating field. We're going to say at repetition, and we'll say equals get calculation repetition number right there. So what that does is it just simply says, whatever repetition we're on on the repeating field, give me the repetition number. So if we're on repetition number 33, it's going to give me a 33. So this is how we're going to go ahead and start off from the first day and make each repetition show in the next day following it. It's pretty cool how that works. Then we're going to say the result of this is going to be at start date plus at repetition. There we go. Close that off. And so that should do it. Should go ahead and make a different date. And we are resulting in a date here. Realize that, because that's going to be how we actually go ahead and do a lot of things in the future with this, because it has to be a date, not just a number. And let's see, we cannot find the specified field. Where did I mess up here? At first day. Oh, here's what we did. We have three declarations here, so we need square brackets. Only when you have one declaration can you have no square brackets. But you need to have this, you know, brackets here to say these are all variables. These are, you know, the when you do the let function, you can do this one without the brackets, but not all three of these. So that should solve our problem. And still, we don't have, we still have a problem here. Ah, looks like we need, let's see, what's it having a problem with? Equals first day. Specified field cannot be found at, re oh, I made a spelling error. There we go. Good. Sometimes it's hard to see when you're that close, if you, and sometimes you don't even pay attention to what the calculation uh, dialog is telling you. OK. So let's go into layout mode. I'm going to come in here and drag a field on here. Choose my monthly current. I don't need a label on it. Make it approximately right size. Come over here and tell it to show 1 through 7. And we're going to show them going across. And if we start showing the sample data, you'll already realize it's showing us that what we want. So what do we want to see in here? We don't actually want to see the date. We actually want to come over here and change this. Scroll down here. So it's only showing us a custom function, which is going to only have the data. So I'm going to take none, none, leave that, put none here, and then remove all these separators here. You may not have known how to do this, but this is a pretty straightforward thing to do uh, for making custom dates. So now it's only going to show that day. You can see now it's got it. I'm going to justify that to the right, I think. We'll go ahead and put that onto the right side. And that's looking pretty good to show us the date. You can see that if you remember what the monthly calendar looked like, it started off with 29, 30, and then went 1 and 2. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure this is just about the right size. And a little bit of space there. Let me go ahead and try that again. That looks pretty good. I think that'll work. We may decide to resize it later if some of the uh, numbers get cut off, but I think we're good. So we'll duplicate that. Choose the same field. But here's what we're going to change on this. We're going to change what repetitions are showing. So it's going to be 8 and then through 15. I believe that's correct. I got one too many there, 14. There we go. Pull that down right in there. We'll duplicate that. I'm using Smart Duplicate so I don't have to align them. 
and that should be the six rows we want. Now I just need to go to each one here. Now if you don't know what smart duplicate is, what happens is when you duplicate an object, let's say you take a square and we duplicate it, it offsets it by I believe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, nine by nine. And if we go ahead and duplicate it, you notice that it does it by nine by nine, but if I don't deselect that object, and I'll put it right here and then duplicate it again, now it duplicates by the same amount as before, and I can do it as many times as I want. I can go ahead and do another one. But as soon as I go ahead and deselect it and then do duplicate again, it's going to go the nine by nine. So it's a pretty cool little feature if you know about it because it can really save you some time. So we'll come in here and we need to show 15. Let's see how good my math is here to 21. Yep, got it that time. That time. That would be 22 to 28. Good, I'm doing pretty good here. 23 to 29. And 29 to 42. That one was easy. Whoops. 29 to 42, what I do here? Um, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do we duplicate some here? Oh, yeah. I thought I was doing pretty good. So I didn't quite. I think I skipped. I got ahead of myself here. So this one ends at 28. This is going to be 29. I don't know what I was thinking. Through 35. There we go. And this will be 36 through 42. There we go. Got it up and running. Let's take a look at it in browse mode. It's looking pretty good. You notice when we click in, there's actually a date there. That's important to have that date in there. So there's your basic calendar. We're going to make it look a lot nicer in, in the upcoming videos, but here's the basic idea behind it. We've got everything we want, and based on the current data, it'll always show this information correctly.